But I'll tell you, you can tell him now if you're watching it, we're still fighting for this title. I changed my studs, put longer studs in, because I wanted to hair to mum. We have a neighbour, and sometimes neighbours are noisy. It's only the second player ever to be sent off in a European Cup final, and it's that little slap of Vidic's face, that's all it's about. Totally unnecessary, but he's had capital punishment. On the sidelines, Alex Ferguson, Roberto Mancini having to be separated. That wasn't, I mean, that's high. Of the no, that wasn't. That's high. But it's not finished yet, they're all around Ruth van Nistelrooy. Then he and Keane clash, Keane almost retaliated. Through Mikel, in goes Everett, oh, crunch. that's a oh. slight challenge, that crunch. Bit, he... And Roy Keane gets a red card again. I will love it if we beat them. Love it. A hero is only as good as his villain. Rivalries in football are essential because without them, the game would be boring. The same team would monopolize the league each year. There'd be no jeopardy. Rivalries also push teams to the next level. Just look at City and Liverpool. Guardiola and Klopp have said themselves their sides wouldn't be at their current standard but for the existence of the other. But what's the best rivalry in the Premier League? I'm specifically talking about the elite level of the Premier League. Genuine title rivalries. A rivalry is competition for the same objective. It must be a lasting competitive relationship and for our purposes, there has to be a relative equality of power. So immediately, purely local rivalries, isolated title races, or one-sided rivalries are excluded. Whatever you may think of the North London derby, or the Merseyside derby, or any other purely local derby, there's never been an occasion when the participants of those rivalries have been competing for the league. Likewise, even though the Liverpool United rivalry is seen as the biggest in the Prem, the fact is there's been just one season where both of these sides were in a title race. There's never been a genuine Premier League title rivalry between these two. So with our definition set out, we're left with six proper rivalries. My name's Nobbins, by the way, and I'll be your guide as we plunge down the football rivalry rabbit hole. Make sure to subscribe for more football videos, but without further ado, from worst to best, Here's my top six all-time Premier League rivalries. At the arse end of this list, it's the first and worst rivalry in Premier League history. Manchester United versus Blackburn, 1993-1995. There isn't much historical... There isn't that much historic bad blood between these two clubs. However, Blackburn was the first club to properly challenge Man United's early dominance in the Premier League era. Rovers was newly promoted, and thanks to the millions of its owner, Jack Walker, was able to spend big on the likes of Alan Shearer. Blackburn even tried to sign Roy Keane from Nottingham Forest, but with just a verbal agreement in place, Sir Alex Ferguson hijacked the deal in 93, adding a bit of much-needed fire for this to count as an actual rivalry. United and Blackburn finished first and second from 1994 to 95, with the title changing hands across those two years. And there was an exciting conclusion to the 95 title race, with Blackburn losing on the final day, but still winning the league due to United's failure to win at West Ham. However, the reason why this rivalry is right at the bottom of this list is largely due to what happened afterwards. As the investment dried up, Blackburn fell off a cliff and never challenged United again. The rivalry only really lasted for two years and didn't necessarily feature any amazing storylines. It was brief, had little history, and is easily the most forgettable rivalry on this list. And before anyone knew it, United was being challenged by another team. Now this was a much more memorable rivalry. Manchester United versus Newcastle United, 1995 to 1997. As Blackburn fell, Newcastle filled the void. Newcastle finished in sixth the season before the rivalry began and would finish second and second to United's consecutive top spot finishes from 96 to 97. So whilst Newcastle failed to win a title, it still felt much more like a genuine rivalry as opposed to Blackburn versus Man United. The drama and storylines of the 96 season were unrivaled up to that point, with Kevin Keegan's Newcastle a tremendously exciting, attacking, flawed side, believing they could outscore anyone to the Premier League title. It was an iconic season with an iconic kit, 
manager and players. Peter Beardsley, Les Ferdinand and David Ginola to name just a few. There was even some transfer drama with Andy Cole moving to United from Newcastle the previous season. But what this rivalry is really remembered for is Newcastle's capitulation, a seven goal thriller and Keegan's rant. Newcastle had a 12 point lead in January 1996, but threw that all away by winning just one game in six, including home defeat by Man United. One of the best games in Prem history followed with Newcastle losing 4-3 at Anfield, Keegan slumping over, dejected, and United overtaking Newcastle in the table. Keegan's brilliant rant would go on to personify this rivalry. Yeah, how do you assess Leeds United? Why are they not up the top six? And if they produced effort like that, they would be the top six. But of course, you think for some of them it's more important to get a result against Manchester United to stop winning the week than anything else. And of course, when they come to Newcastle, you wait to see the difference. A lot of things have been said over the last few days. Some, some of it almost slanderous. I think you've got to send Alex Ferguson a tape of this game, haven't you? When you do that with footballers, like he said about Leeds, and when you do things like that about a man like Stuart Pearce, I'm, I've kept really quiet, but I'll tell you something. He went down in my estimation when he said that. We have not resorted to that, but I'll tell you, you can tell him now, be watching it. We're still fighting for this title, and he's got to go to Middlesbrough and get something. And, and I'll tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. But ultimately, despite the infamy of the Newcastle and Man United title race and rivalry, it ranks low on this list in part due to its brevity, but also because Newcastle failed to adequately challenge United's dominance. For all the excitement of the 96 title race, 97 would see them finish seven points behind United and actually on the same points as third-placed Arsenal. Realistically, the rivalry only lasted for two seasons and Newcastle would never get that close again. Shearer joined the following season from Blackburn, but Newcastle, like Blackburn, disappeared from title relevance. This one is the first and only rivalry on this list, which was already a pre-established local derby. Manchester United versus Manchester City, 2010 to 2013. The Manchester derby has always been a big game due to the local derby factor, so a rivalry of sorts has always existed. But in the early Premier League era especially, City comfortably fell into United's shadow, and there was never an equality of power between the two. Years of poor ownership, leadership, direction, and investment heavily contrasted with United's dominance. Whilst United were winning the treble in 99 against Bayern in the Champions League final. City were winning the third tier playoff match against Gillingham. Now for Gota, can't get a shot in. Dickoff, he scored. Paul Dickoff has scored for Manchester City, and Gillingham can't believe it. Even in 2008, when City was taken over, the prospect of City ever genuinely challenging United's dominance was laughable. It was dismissed by many, including Fergie. When asked whether City can be top dogs in the 2010 season, Fergie simply replied, "Not in my lifetime." The name of the game at this club is to win the league. It doesn't matter what we do against Man City. At the end of the season, we want to see us at the top. It doesn't matter. OK, at the moment, we have a neighbour. And sometimes neighbours are noisy. That same season, former United star Carlos Tevez would sign for City, with City erecting a huge billboard of Tevez just outside the roads that led to Salford and Trafford, with Welcome to Manchester plastered across it. This was perhaps the first sign of the shift in power between the two clubs. Former United players had signed for City earlier in the Premier League era. Think of Andy Cole and Peter Schmeichel. But this was very different because those players were at the end of their careers. And also City were not a threat to United in any way. Tevez was not at the end of his career and City very much were becoming a huge threat. United. Fast forward to the 2010-11 season, and for me, this is where this rivalry truly began. The Manchester derbies now meant much more, were much more even, and City were finally capable of outplaying United. City did fail to challenge for the league in 2011, finishing nine points behind United. But City had never been so close and were now a genuine threat. The noisy neighbour was now almost on a level footing, and the FA Cup semi-final personified this perfectly. United used to have a banner at Old Trafford, this mocked City's failure to win a trophy after 35 years. But following City's defeat of United in the FA Cup semi-final and subsequent cup win, City's barren spell was over, and United finally recognised City as a footballing threat. The 2011-12 season was the peak of this rivalry. In my opinion, it's the greatest title race in Premier League history. I've even got a framed uh, piece celebrating it. City battered United at Old Trafford 6-1. United knocked City out of the FA Cup at the Etihad, 
United managed to bottle an eight-point lead with only eight games remaining. Vincent Kompany's header in a 1-0 win at the Etihad put City ahead of United, just on goal difference. Mancini and Fergie feuded, and United thought they'd won the title on the last game of the season before Aguero's title-winning goal in the 93rd minute, plus 20 seconds. Balotelli! Aguero! It was evidence that finally the power had shifted in Manchester and the blue moon had risen. The following season, City failed to defend their title and United comfortably won in Fergie's final season. Unfortunately for this rivalry's sake, United has not been the same ever since Fergie retired. And while City and United have finished first and second since then, on neither occasion has there ever been a genuine title race between the two. And there's now a current blatant gulf in quality between the two sides. Manchester derbies, while still big games in their own right, currently have no bearing on the title race, as how it was before the rise of City. Ultimately, this rivalry lasted for a maximum of three years and included just one genuine title race. For me, it places ahead of the Newcastle and Blackburn rivalries because of the storylines and because of that pre-existing local derby factor and rivalry, and also the storyline of the power shift between the red and blue side of Manchester. It does help when there is genuine animosity between the clubs, especially when it's fueled by that local rivalry. But it does miss out on the top three, and it misses out on the top three, I think, by a considerable margin. It's top three time, and it's time for the special one to make an appearance. Manchester United versus Chelsea, 2005 to 2011. Following the takeover of Chelsea by Abramovich in 2003 and the spending spree that followed, Chelsea was transformed into a title challenger. After Chelsea's second place finish in the 2004 Invincible season, Mourinho's Chelsea eased to the Premier League title in 2005 without a genuine rival, eclipsing second-placed Arsenal by 12 points. The following season would mark the beginning of Arsenal's downfall as a genuine title contender. Or an Arsenal later. And so began the Chelsea-Man United rivalry. This is comfortably the longest rivalry we've assessed so far lasting for six seasons and of those six five of those seasons saw Chelsea and United finish first and second however only two of those seasons saw a genuine title race Chelsea won by eight points then United won by six points then United won by two points then United had a title race with Liverpool finishing seven points above Chelsea then Chelsea won by one point and finally, United won by nine points, with Chelsea finishing on the same points as Man City. So in terms of an actual title race, only two out of six or a third of the seasons would have classified as genuine title races between the two of them. And the rivalry also suffered in part due to a lack of an historic rivalry between the clubs. Chelsea was very much a new kids on the block club, as opposed to, let's say, Arsenal, who along with United had achieved success in England's top flight over a number of decades. Chelsea, by comparison, only had one league title to its name before the takeover, and that was won in the 50s. United was much the bigger club, and the lack of an historic rivalry between the two could not be subsidised by a local derby factor. Chelsea essentially came out of nowhere to challenge United and become their new rival, and that perhaps made it feel less organic of a rivalry as opposed to what's to come. So that's why this rivalry misses out on the top two, but there's still ample reasons as to why it's the highest place won so far. In addition to the sharing of Premier League titles over six years, albeit with just two of those being proper title races, these sides were the first to contest an all-English Champions League final, and they currently remain the only English sides to do so whilst being title rivals. What the rivalry perhaps lacked in history, it certainly made up for it in respect of quality. In addition to the 2008 Champions League final, when United beat Chelsea thanks to an iconic John Terry slip, these sides also met in the 2007 FA Cup final. Chelsea quickly joined United as one of the most successful clubs of the Premier League era, with the two sides sharing most of the domestic honours across the span of the rivalry. It also boiled over onto and off the pitch. Chelsea and United games became very hard hitting. They were true battles and wars at times. The recent Rooney documentary shed light that he wanted to go out and potentially hurt Chelsea players when they clashed. There were fisticuffs at times on the pitch. And not just between the players, Fergie versus Mourinho was a rivalry in itself, with the pair regularly exchanging verbal insults. Fergie even saying Mourinho has no respect for anyone but himself. Had Mourinho stayed especially to manage a Champions League final against Fergie, we could be looking at the greatest rivalry the Premier League has seen. But sadly, we were denied that storyline. And for me, that lack of continuity of managers affects this rivalry's ranking.
When people discuss Premier League rivalries, the battles between Man United and Arsenal are usually what they think of first. Manchester United versus Arsenal, 1997 to 2005. From 1998 to 2004, either United or Arsenal won the league title. But that's not to say the teams were equal in strength during this period. The first two title races were settled by just one point. But for the next two seasons, Arsenal were in a title race in name only. The season after, it was United's turn to fail to challenge, finishing in third and 10 points behind Arsenal. The 2002-03 season would see a return to a genuine title race, United winning the league five points ahead of Arsenal, only for United to then finish in third and 15 points behind the Invincibles. Thereafter, 2004 would be a turning point in the Premier League as it saw Arsenal's final Premier League win to date and the rise of Chelsea who we've just covered. So whilst the rivalry did last for seven seasons, similar to United versus Chelsea, only a small number of those seasons were actual title races, three out of seven on this occasion. That being said, United versus Arsenal in the late 90s and early 2000s was potentially the peak of the Premier League era, certainly in terms of legends. The quality of the players was extraordinary. Henri, Perez, Scholes, Van Nistelrooy, Ashley Cole, Rio Ferdinand, Burkamp, the list of Premier League greats goes on and on and on. The players were quality and so were the two managers. This was when Wenger was a threat to Fergie. Wenger had revolutionised Premier League football and they were the first side to genuinely challenge United's dominance to a level Newcastle or Blackburn couldn't hope to reach. But what personifies this rivalry above all else was the intense rivalry and hatred between the two midfield generals and captains, Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira. Whenever these two share the same pitch, they went to war. The players from these teams were not just exceptional in terms of quality, they were battle-hardened warriors. Brilliant passages of play were equally as enthralling as the crunching challenges, fights and red cards. When Van Nistelrooy infamously missed a penalty in the Invincible season, he was surrounded and goaded by Arsenal players, primarily Martin Keown, at what became known as the Battle of Old Trafford. Seven red cards were shown over the course of these contests. Each team took joy in the other's suffering. It wasn't enough to simply view the other side as opposition. They were the enemy. You were going to war and the pitch was the battleground. But even the tunnels were used for warfare by these two sides. One of the most iconic Premier League moments was when Keane and Vieira argued and nearly threatened to cause a rumble in the tunnel before kickoff almost cancelling the match. Whilst taking place in the season I deemed to be after the genuine conclusion of the rivalry, the Battle of the Buffet or Pizzagate is another example where tempers boiled over between the two clubs as Fergie was hit in the face with a slice of pizza allegedly thrown by an Arsenal player. There looked to be a slight fracas in the dressing room area just then. Can you tell us what happened? Um, I didn't see anything, mate, to be honest with you. You keep lying to me and I'll send you and your baby to jail. This was a truly brilliant rivalry, and many people will think it should be number one on this list, and number one by a large margin. But there are a number of reasons why I've placed this second on the list rather than first. Firstly, whilst both of these clubs were obviously excellent during different stages of this rivalry, there was never an instance or occasion in which both sides were quite clearly the number one and two sides in the world. They were never simultaneously at the peak of football. In fact, often one was quite strong whilst the other failed to challenge in the league. So whilst the quality was obviously excellent, it wasn't necessarily as good or as strong as what's number one on this list. And that leads into the lack of high stake matches. Now, of course, there were iconic matches. Arsenal won the league at Old Trafford. United knocked Arsenal out of the FA Cup semi-final twice. Think of the infamous Ryan Giggs winner during the treble year and Arsenal beat United in the 2005 FA Cup final. But the rivalry never spilled over into Europe. United and Arsenal have met each other once on the continent in a Champions League semi-final. But that was in 2009, many years after the conclusion of this rivalry. And in my opinion, that's what this rivalry lacked. Were the players exceptional? Yes. Were the managers exceptional? Yes. But were both sides the strongest in Europe and indeed the world at any stage or occasion during this rivalry? And did we witness that spillover into Europe? No. I know I can already hear the rapid typing of angry comments. So let me caveat the placement of this rivalry. Mm. Manchester City versus Liverpool, 2017 to present. It is literally impossible to properly and accurately 
rank a rivalry which is still ongoing. I'm ranking this as the greatest rivalry in Premier League history on the assumption that it continues for at least one or maybe even two more seasons and there is a high stakes clash in the Champions League. If that doesn't happen, then I'll gladly swap numbers one and two. But based on current trends, I think it's fair to assume City and Liverpool aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Now, City versus Liverpool is a very modern rivalry. Whilst there have been title races between these sides before the Premier League, and there's always the cross-city rivalry between Liverpool and Manchester, this rivalry can properly trace its origins back to the 2013-14 season. The Gerrard slip, Suarez's individual brilliance, Chris Dambull, and City ultimately winning one of the best title races the Prem has seen. Another precursor was the transfer of Raheem Sterling from Liverpool to City. Liverpool weren't close to challenging for a title at that point, so Sterling moved to the ever-ambitious Man City. And in his first season, City and Sterling won the League Cup against Liverpool in the final. But it's the 17-18 season which marked the genuine start of this rivalry. There was no title race with Liverpool who finished fourth, but Liverpool beat City at Anfield in the league and then proceeded to knock the Centurions out of the Champions League. The following season, it was another of the great Premier League title races. Not just in terms of the quality of the football, but also in respect of the storyline. Liverpool were in control of the race, lost to City at the Etihad in an astounding game filled with drama and an iconic goal line clearance, and City held their nerve winning the league by one point. In the 2019-20 season, Liverpool stormed to the title, beating City by 18 points. And then the next season, it was Liverpool's turn to fall behind City. They finished in third and 17 points behind City. And that brings us to the current title race. In terms of genuine title races then, this rivalry doesn't have that many. Discounting the 2013-14 season, there have realistically only been two title races between these two sides, and that includes this season. So that puts it one behind the United-Arsenal rivalry and on the same number of races as Chelsea-Man United. Another potential issue, as things stand anyway, is that Liverpool has only won one Premier League in the span of the rivalry. Of course, the rivalry is still ongoing and no one knows how many more seasons it will last for, if any. But either way, it is comparable to, and I believe better than, any of the rivalries we've discussed on this list. There's no doubt that the quality in respect of the on-pitch performances and in points tallies is something that we haven't ever seen in the Premier League. Because it's inconceivable that a team could achieve 97 points and not win the Premier League. City achieved 198 points across two seasons and Liverpool 196. In terms of on-pitch performances, these two have pushed each other to another level. And that's something echoed by Guardiola. Speaking of Guardiola, the Guardiola versus Klopp rivalry is immense. It's a very different rivalry to Fergie versus Wenger, where there seems to be genuine animosity and hate between the two. The Klopp Guardiola rivalry seems to be founded more on mutual respect and tactics. They're essentially nice to each other, and the rivalry is nothing to do with aggression or hate. Even in Germany, Klopp was Guardiola's biggest threat. He's the manager Guardiola has lost to the most in his whole career partly because Klopp's style is the perfect counter to Guardiola's. So the rivalry has title races, longevity, unbelievable quality of football, tactics and management. And unlike the other rivalries, City and Liverpool are comfortably the two best sides in the world. And they're also managed by the two best managers in the world. The managerial rivalry is also there as discussed, and I don't see these two going away anytime soon. I think it has the potential to get even better. And there's a chance that City and Liverpool will meet each other in this season's Champions League final. But one of the key criticisms this rivalry receives is the lack of hate between the two sides, because there is no Keane versus Vieira dynamic on the pitch. The matches are great spectacles and a high quality of football, but there isn't a war of attrition on the pit. The players don't hate each other, and it's rare for fights, spats, and red cards to be seen in this fixture. In fact, the players seem to like each other. De Bruyne even revealed that his children go to the same school as Van Dyke and that they get on very well. So that is why this rivalry cannot be considered the best, because it lacks hate. And I don't buy that for one second. I don't think on the pitch hatred matters nearly as much as people make out. People seem to be obsessed with the hatred of the United Arsenal rivalry, but I don't view a lack of red cards, fights, bad blood and awful challenges as an issue. Because rivalries are far more meaningful than pure animosity. There's nothing integrally better about a rivalry being fueled by hate and attrition as opposed to a rivalry being fueled by 
respect and quality. I also think times have changed and I don't even know if that mold of Premier League player exists anymore. That being said, I do think there has to be a level of dislike, hate or resentment to top this list. But there have been plenty of events to add fuel to the hate of this rivalry. It just primarily happened to take place off the pitch rather than on it. Sterling's move from Liverpool to City, for example, to this day, he's booed by Liverpool fans, while City fans make a conscious effort to sing Raheem Sterling, he's top of the league, to Liverpool fans at every opportunity. There's also a general dislike between Liverpool and City due to the historic rivalries between the two cities. Now, City aren't United, but if trends continue and City continue to rise and United continue to fall, it is probable that new generations of football fans and the younger fans will view or come to view City versus Liverpool as a bigger better rivalry than United versus Liverpool. When Liverpool lost the Champions League final in 2018, City fans made a song mocking Liverpool. And it's not just the fans. The song was then sung by the City players. Bernardo Silva to this day appears to be the subject of hatred for so many Liverpool fans for refusing to give Liverpool a guard of honour. Whilst not renowned for red cards, an incident between Edison and Sadio Mane, in which Mane was sent off for kicking Edison in the face, does go to show these matches can get physical. The rivalry has even made its way into the international setup with Sterling and Gomez getting into an altercation whilst on England duty. And perhaps the best and worst example of the hatred between the two sides is the attack on City's bus in the build-up to the Champions League quarterfinals in 2018, when Liverpool would comfortably knock City out of the competition. Not only did City players and fans feel hard done by due to a number of odd refereeing decisions, City's team bus was literally attacked by hordes of Liverpool fans. The bus was so badly damaged, it was put out of commission, and the effect of the attack genuinely shook the City players on board. I'll repeat, I don't think hate alone should be the main reason to rank a rivalry as the best. But I will say that a good rivalry should have a certain degree of bitterness and or hate. This rivalry has been accused of lacking hate, but those people are clearly not looking in the right places. All that being said, it's so hard to rank this rivalry because it's still ongoing. If for whatever reason City or Liverpool fall off a cliff next season or the season after, and they fail to have another title race for a good number of years, then I do think this would fall down to number two on this list. But the more likely scenario is that there is going to be at least one more title race between City and Liverpool. Throw in a Champions League final into that, and I think you would be looking at the undisputed greatest, biggest, best rivalry the Premier League has seen. The two best teams in the world, managed and led by the two best managers in the world. 339 points for City versus 338 points for Liverpool across the past four seasons, following the most recent clash between the two. Incredible tactical battles, and a quality of football no other rivalry can come close to. Not that much hatred on the pitch, but plenty off it. A rivalry that isn't just contained domestically, but has already spilled over into Europe. Conflict that's lasted for five years already, and could easily last for several more, and that would make it the longest on this list. I think there does need to be at least one more title race between these two sides. But as I've said before, I don't see Liverpool or City going anywhere after the conclusion of this season. Does Liverpool have to win one more league title for this to count as the greatest rivalry? Maybe. But for me, that's not a deal breaker. In my opinion, City versus Liverpool is the greatest rivalry the Premier League has seen. But let me know what you think is the greatest rivalry using this top six ranking. Where would you rank each and every rivalry that's appeared on this list? Let me know in the comments section below. Please make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you enjoy football videos, this is a football channel. I uh, just do it. <laughs> don't know what that noise was. Hi there. It's Future Nobbins here. I just wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, the link is in the description. Thank you to everyone. If you're in the tip jar, which is just a pound a month, if you're a noblet, golden noblet, and a huge shout out in particular to my three noblets of fire. I'm looking at you, Flippy Flops, and Frozone, and Engolo Engolo, can't it? You guys. The people on the Patreon are the reason why I've been able to make upgrades such as this lovely microphone. It's the first time we've, we've, first time we've used this microphone uh, on a YouTube video. Hopefully you can tell an audio difference. I know on the stream you guys have been enjoying my dulcet tones on uh, this new mic. Uh, looking to uh, invest in other equipment upgrades as we go forwards. So yeah, if you'd like to support, the link is just in the description. It would genuinely mean the world to me. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And I'll see you next time.